Hi everyone, welcome to this tutorial on loading projectile types at runtime in GB Studio 3 and 4 and <laughs> whatever comes in the future. Um, this is quite a hacky process, uh, it's a little tricky to do, but uh, people on my over at my Patreon voted on it and I wanted to show this off for a long time. So here we go, I'm going to show you guys how to load projectile types at runtime. So you probably already know this, but in GB Studio, you're limited to a maximum of five unique projectile types per scene. Um, I'm going to put a list on the screen here of what makes a projectile unique. So the things on the left count towards unique projectiles. If any one of these is different, it's a unique projectile and it counts towards the limit of five per scene. But the things on the right, uh, those don't count towards uniqueness. And the reason is uh, the things that do count towards uniqueness they are stored in projectile data files that you can load using GBVM at runtime. And the things on the right are actually part of the GBVM commands that um, call projectiles or, or uh, launch projectiles. And that's done each time you launch the projectile, so they don't count towards uniqueness. Okay, so let's get started. Um, I've prepared a very basic scene here. Um, all it has is an attach script to B button event with a normal launch projectile event. This is a completely standard launch projectile. Let's a player swing a sword. Let's take a quick look. Uh, here we have it. When you press the B button, you swing a sword. Very basic. But let's say we're using our other four projectiles for enemies, but we also want the player to be able to swap to other weapons and use different projectiles. We can do that with the VM projectile load type command. So we're going to start setting that up now. Bear with me, this is going to be a long one. <laughs> what does a launch projectile event actually do? It does two things. Um, the first thing is when the game is compiled, uh, each launch projectile event uh, creates a projectile in the data of the game. So it creates these projectile data files. And the way we can look at those is we click on game, advanced, export project data. If we can go into the source folder in the data folder, and we will find in here, um, projectile data files. So here's one uh, for scene one. Scene one projectiles, we're gonna open it up, take a look. Right, here we go. So this is, how projectile data is stored in the engine. Um, you can see here we have this struct of all the projectile definitions in a scene. Each one is assigned a slot. So we've put one projectile in the scene. That means it goes in slot zero, starting in slot zero, and then slot one, two, three, and four. So slot zero, we have the sword projectile. This is its definition. Basically what the VM projectile load type command does is it takes this data and loads it into a slot in the scene. So one of our five slots that we have to use. Um, say you're to add more unique projectiles into the scene. So let's go ahead and do that really quick. Uh, this one is like, I don't know, a fire projectile. That's going to go into slot one. And if we go ahead and export project data again, check out the projectiles file for scene one. We can see it's added projectile one to the struct and so on and so forth. So if you actually have actors as well in your scene with projectiles, it will go in the order of uh, scene on a knit. Projectiles are loaded first, then actor one, then actor two, then actor three projectiles. They're, or they're loaded in the order that actors are added to the scene, if that makes sense. So the second thing that the projectile event does is it's actually part of the script that it's in. It runs a uh, VM projectile launch GBVM event to launch whatever projectile is loaded in the relevant slot. So we can also take a look at that. I'm going to go and export the project data again. Um, and if we look in source data script input zero, this is an input script. So we've been here. Um, we can see the GBVM generated by that script. Uh, this is what GBVM is generated by 
uh, the launch projectile event. Uh, pretty much it sets up an actor on the stack. It says whether or not the projectile is strong and whether or not it loops. Uh, it picks the direction for the projectile to go. And then it launches with VM projectile launch, you can see here, it launches whatever projectile is loaded in slot zero. And then using this little struct here, this is what the ARG3 references. You don't actually have to worry about what this does because what we're going to do is we're going to copy paste this. So we need to copy all of this. So from VM reserve four to VM pop four, copy all of that. We're going to take it over here. We're going to make a new GBVM event. Paste it in. And so now we have the uh, GBVM script for launching a projectile. So we can get rid of the launch projectile event, right? No, we can't because like I said, it does two things. It calls this GBVM script, but it's also recognized by GB Studio uh, at compile time to load or, or to put this uh, projectile into the game data. So we have to keep the launch projectile event, but we wanna make it so that it never gets called. So <laughs> the hacky way that I do this is I go if math expression, if one equals zero, which it never will, uh, then launch projectile. So this will never be called, but the event's still there so that this can get compiled. And this sword projectile is in slot zero by default. By the way, if you're doing this in attach script to button, you must keep this in the attach script. You can't put it outside of the attach script. It must be within the same script. Anyway, so now what happens is this Projectile is loaded into slot zero because it's present, but not called. And then this script calls or, or launches whatever projectile is in slot zero. So let's go ahead and have a look, see if it works. Yep, still works. So we've chopped our GB, we've chopped our projectile into two halves, uh, the loading and the launching. So now what we have to do is we have to create our other projectiles that we want to load into scene one. So I've made another scene here, scene two, and I made a new projectile. So this one is fire. It's got a different sprite and it moves forward. The way I'm going to get it to load into scene one, well, basically, let's go ahead and just take another look at the project data. Um, scene two projectiles is now gonna look something like this. So we've got the fire sprite in slot zero. We can actually reference this projectile data file uh, in scene one. So what I'm gonna do is add a new GBVM event. And I have pre-prepared this one, but let's type it out anyway. We're gonna do VM projectile load type command. Um, I'm going to go zero. So this loads whatever's in slot zero in scene two into slot zero in scene one. You can't load, um, say from slot one into slot zero. It always has to be the same slot. A little bit annoying, but that's how it works. Then triple underscore bank scene two projectiles, obviously. If you're not using scene two, replace the number with whatever scene you are loading from. And then scene two projectiles. Whoa, that's not meant to be caps. <laughs> scene two projectiles. Uh, again, replace the number with the, whatever scene you're loading from. So what this does, like I said, is it loads the projectile in slot zero from scene two into slot zero in scene one. And because this is on a net, it's just gonna do it immediately. And then when we call this GBVM script to launch the projectile in slot zero, it will have been overridden by this one. So let's uh, take a look. What the heck? That's not our fire sprite. Um, you also have to make sure that GBS compiles the 
fire sprite or whatever projectile sprite you want to use in the scene. And the way I do this is I made a little plugin linked in the description that just loads a sprite. Um, so I'm gonna select fire. That makes sure that the fire sprite is actually compiled in the scene data. So let's try that again. You could put this anywhere in the scene, by the way. It doesn't matter where it is. Okay, awesome. We can see our fire now. Very, very cool. So that is the basic setup. Uh, going through it again very quickly. Make your launch projectile event, your dummy one, uh, or your default one. Uh, grab the appropriate GBVM script that it generates from the source. Um, make the event unreachable, but keep it in the script so that it's added to one of the slots. It fills one of the slots. Then make your projectile that you want to load in another scene. Call it or load it with a GBGM script somewhere. And then make sure that the appropriate sprite sheet is also loaded. So in terms of applications for this, um, you would usually do something like this. So attach script to button. You might want to, you'd probably want to make a menu or something. Uh, that's what we did for Hime's quest, but so say I'm going to put it on the A button. So now when I press A, it's going to load this projectile. It swaps my weapon to fire when I press A. Now, obviously in a real game, you want to make it something more complicated than that, but just an example. So I'm using a sword with B, press A, and now I'm using fire. Cool. I can swap projectiles without counting towards the projectile limit. I still have four projectiles left for enemies, so I can make some pretty complicated stuff. Uh, that's what we did for Hime's quest. Uh, there's one more thing that I think is worth mentioning. If you eject your engine, um, and then you can go into, I think you should go into data to put it. So I can grab a projectile file that I had already generated, like this one. Um, and I can like rename it pretty much. So I'm going to rename this one. My projectile is very original name. Uh, rename that my projectiles. I'm going to go ahead and rename the file to. Uh, so now this just sits in the engine and we can call it exactly the same way we would any of the automatically generated files. So I should be able to go my projectiles, my projectiles. So as long as it's sitting there in the engine, uh, we can basically put in as many projectile files as we like. And it should still work. Yep. Awesome. Uh, yeah, that's about it. It's a very hacky method, as you can see. I'm sure people are going to have a lot of questions, and I might have to, you know, update this tutorial in the future. But the information is out there now. I hope people appreciate it and uh, make stuff with it, because I've been meaning to do this for like maybe like over a year at this point. Uh, so I'm really interested to see if it's actually useful to people. Anyway. Uh, thanks to the people over on Patreon for supporting me and voting on this one. Uh, shameless plug, wink, wink. Go check it out. Go check out GB Studio Lab, uh, which is my uh, GB Studio tutorial website. Link to the Patreon is there too. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Anyway, uh, <laughs> just kidding. Uh, I hope that was helpful. And if you have any questions, I'll do my best to answer them. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.